everybody, how you doing? I'm at the church where they had uh, Bob Crane's funeral service. Uh, this would be July 1978. Uh, they've given me permission uh, to go inside and uh, film video, so I appreciate them letting me do that. Uh, the name of the church is the Church of St. Paul the Apostle. And then after we go in, I'll share a picture with you when they're bringing uh, Bob Crane's casket out uh, down these stairs, down these steps, and loading into the hearse. When I show you the picture, uh, pay attention to these arches. Those three arches. Also, please make note of this, um, this square in the door. Because they show up in the picture and that proves this was the right area. In attendance that day was Carol O'Connor, uh, Patty Duke, John Aston. About 200 people attended the uh, funeral service. It happened right here. Well, this is about the only funeral picture probably exists of Bob Crane's services. Uh, this would be Bob Crane's son right behind the gentleman in the front. And then if you look on the other side of the casket, I believe that's uh, Robert Carey of Hogan's Heroes. Right behind him is Larry Hovis, also of Hogan's Heroes. Uh, they're carrying the casket down the stairs. That's in the video. Also, um, here's the, uh, the three arches I talked about and the square in the door. I like doing that. I like to find old pictures and go to the site today and compare them. Uh, this proves this was the location of Bob Crane's funeral. This cemetery is right downtown L.A., the main entrance is right there. That's Wilshire Boulevard. That's the only entrance. This is a very small cemetery. Looks like it was established in 1906. And the town just grew up around it. It's really cramped. But this cemetery is just filled with movie stars and celebrities. Uh, Bob Crane's buried here. Originally, he was buried at the Oakwood Memorial Park. But his wife uh, relocated him here. Uh, Bob Crane starts out in Connecticut as a, as a D, DJ. Uh, he's recruited to a major market here in L.A. And uh, does well. He takes a uh, station that was struggling. He takes it to uh, number one ratings. Eventually he's known as the king of the airways. 
Now this leads to him having guest spots on various um, television programs such as Dick Van Dyke. He did very well there. Um, got the attention of some producers and directors. So they cast him in his own show. We all know it's Hogan's Heroes. Runs from 1965 until 1971. So once the show was canceled, uh, Bob's career began to uh, uh, slip. Um, uh, struggling a little bit. So what he does, he buys the rights to a play called Beginner's Luck. Now this was designed to go from coast to coast, playing in theaters across America. They start out in Florida at the time of Bob's death, which was June 29th, 1978. They were um, performing at a dinner theater in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, Bob liked the girls. He had numerous affairs. Um, he had a porn addiction. Here's Bob now. This is where Bob's buried along with his wife. Uh, this is the wife that relocated him to this location. But Bob had a sex addiction and porn addiction. So what happens is he meets a fellow by the name of John Carpenter, who's a sales director, regional manager for Sony. Uh, John's an expert with video equipment. Again, this is 1978 when everything was taped. Uh, so uh, what they would do, here's Bob and a uh, picture of his wife. Very pretty. So what they would do is they would go to the bars and nightclubs and because Bob is a celebrity, he attracts uh, numerous women. And then Bob uh, Crane introduces a fellow by the name of John Carpenter as his manager. Well, the routine was that they would pick up uh, young ladies and go back uh, to the apartments and the hotels and they would be videotaped. Uh, the word is that some knew it, uh, some did not. So, next thing that happens, uh, Bob Crane ends up dead, and it's a cold case this very day. Some say John Carpenter whacked him with a tripod. Others say it's a jealous boyfriend. And then there are those that say it was his ex-wife that got him. Uh, who really knows? Um, very interesting case. Uh, uh, I've read a lot about it. Uh, Bob Crane just had a world of talent. Just had a world of talent. It's, it's, I wonder how things would be today if he was still around. Uh, towards the end of this video, I'm going to um, go down to Scottsdale. I'm going to film uh, the apartment complex he was found dead in. And it'll take me uh, a few hours. It'll take you guys probably one second. Bob Crane. Sorely missed. It's quite a mystery. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever, ever know what really happened. Okay, right here is the apartment. It was 132A. Got a couple of pictures to share with you. Here they're taking Bob out of the apartment. You could see that corner window right there. Okay. And here's some detectives and police officers. Right there is the door. Right here. And it's believed when the killer was leaving the apartment, there was some blood, Bob Crane's blood, on the curtains. As though somebody was looking out the window. There was also blood on the door handle. So what was going on at 4 a.m., there was a moving van setting here because it gets extremely hot 
here in Scottsdale in the summertime. Again, this is March. Uh, they were moving uh, the apartment upstairs to the left. Uh, they were moving somebody out of that apartment. So that delayed the killer's exit, it's believed. Uh, later, the movers said that they saw an individual, uh, a white male, leaving the apartment or this area leaving this area here and getting into a white uh, Chrysler Cordoba and that's the car that uh, John Carpenter was renting that day. Uh, this is about where this picture is taken. This is Bob's co-star. She's the one that found the body and went screaming to the neighbors and called the police right here. Okay, now we're at the old windmill theater. We're still in Scottsdale. I just drove the route that Bob would have taken. It's, it's exactly 5.5 miles. Uh, today it's a uh, rent-a-car center, it looks like. Uh, this is where beginner's luck was performed. Bob Crane and Victoria Berry.